All right, hello everyone. I'm Daryl Stringer and welcome to episode three of the Build a Photography Business Show, uh, where I help photographers like you with uh, photography, marketing, and pricing. Uh, this week, where, let me click over here. This week, we're going to uh, have a chat with John Kreider, a real estate photographer from Naples in Florida. I'm going to show you why the biggest barrier to your business success could actually be you and we'll close with an open question and answer time. So start thinking about any questions related to uh, photography and business that you might want to bring up. Um, I will note that we are streaming live to Facebook and YouTube so if you leave a comment I may highlight it during the show so just keep that in mind. All right, today we are joined by photographer John Kreider. So let's bring him in and we'll have a bit of a chat. All right, hello, John. Thank you for joining us today. It's great to have you here. Uh, Hi. Can, you, can you quickly uh, introduce yourself and your business? Sure, Daryl. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for inviting me, for sure. This is great, uh, great for everybody involved. Uh, I grew up in Southwest Florida and uh, I had a very early interest in photography. I was fortunate in, in like as early as the seventh grade to, to have been uh, involved in some darkroom training and things like that. And the photography bug kind of stuck with me through a couple of uh, early careers and then sort of a midlife crisis. I sold everything and, uh, moved to Central America and taught myself underwater photography. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> uh, that started a few years of uh, being very fortunate enough to work around the world, uh, doing underwater photography, other types of photography, teaching some uh, underwater work. And uh, so when I moved back to Southwest Florida in uh, 2015, 2016, uh, to get back into commercial photography, one of the easiest uh, ways to hit the ground running was uh, through real estate work. And so that's kind of where my main focus has been for the last few years. I started uh, started the full-time real estate photography and commercial photography business in 2016, early on in 2016. So we've had uh, a nice opportunity to grow here. It's a, it's a very unique market in the uh, fact that there's a lot of high-end properties here and uh, there's some some nice marketing budgets from the uh, real estate agent so it gives you a little bit of room to kind of stretch out and grow which is mm -hmm. kind of what we tried to do we tried to move into the the higher end markets yeah cool so um why do you do real estate uh, photography and architectural photography so um, why is that something that you're so passionate about well, like I said, I, I really had an, an early interest in photography. And one of the things about, you know, going through life, looking at things, you know, looking at uh, whatever you're seeing is a composition. Uh, that's kind of the way I've always been. So uh, working with architect, especially architecture and, and different designs in houses, it just really gives me the chance to, to look at things and kind of be able to to you know, compose it the way I feel it should be composed, and it's very satisfying when things work out, especially if you yeah. have good good content to work with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know you've got some some stunning homes there in in your market, so there's certainly a lot of great <laughs> um, material to shoot around there. Right. Very fortunate. Yeah. If um if you had one minute on stage in front of a room full of other photographers. Um, based on your experience, what you've done so far, what's something you'd, uh, you've learned uh, that you would want to share with them? Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I guess if it was a room full of photographers who were just trying to break into the real estate photography uh, part of the photography industry, I, I would say maybe try to uh, get a grip on where you really are as far as photographer goes. 
you know, are you a photographer who is wanting to do real estate and architectural photography, or are you wanting to break into the photography industry as a real estate photographer? Uh, and go ahead and try to map out your vision with without you know without constraining yourself too much because if you really just jump in and you say okay i'm going to be a real estate photographer and this is all i want to do uh, it's going to sort of slow you down from being, a being able to grow yeah okay it's a good point yeah so it's it's just having the right focus um and being really right. clear is it in in terms of where you want to be yes uh, yeah so you know when you're when you're doing your early marketing, I, I would say to, you know, be careful about how you position yourself in your market as far as are you, you know, do you want to be the guy that just gives a lot of photographs for a certain price or do you want to be somebody that's going to work your way into a market where your clients uh, are more interested in not only marketing the property that you're hired to take pictures of, but all of this is going to be uh, packaged into the agent branding itself. So, you know, you, once you get into the, the higher end properties with the more successful agents, you know, there's more to it than just selling the house. So, yeah. you, you know, that, that's where you get to, you really have to give yourself a little bit more room to run when you get into situations like that. Not not confide yeah. your stuff to say, I'm just going to go in there. You know, if the house is ready, great. I'm going to shoot it. If it's not, you know, if it needs to do a little bit of work, if, if you need to work with the agents a little bit, you should be prepared to do that at a certain point. Yeah, no, excellent points. Mm -hmm. Really cool. Thanks, John. Um, last one then. Uh, you've, you've been in my coaching program for a couple of years now. Just really briefly, uh, what would you say to another photographer about my coaching program? Um, <laughs> please say something nice. <laughs> it's going to yeah. be awkward if you don't say something. <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, just the fact that I've been in it for, uh, is it been a, it's been a couple of years at least. And, you, you know, in the very beginning, of course, you're more, uh, you know, you have a, a lot more, you have a ton of content. That's, that's one thing. And no matter what phase of the, of your business you're in, whether you're just starting out, uh, whether you don't even have a clue how to price your services, whether you don't know what lens to use. You know, I, I see that all the time in some of the Facebook, group, Facebook groups. You know, you have something from A to Z. And no matter how long I will be there, which will be a while, hopefully, uh, you know, something always comes along where, hey, you know, that's right. You know, that, that's the great way to look at that. This is what I should be thinking about and this is what I should be doing. So yeah. I would say that your content that you provide is the biggest asset. All right. Thank you, John. Yeah. I really appreciate yes. that. Uh, and thank you for your time today. Um, we'll move on. So let's get into a little bit of training. I want to talk about something uh, that I covered a few years ago, but it's something that's uh, still a big problem for a lot of photo photographers. Um, and it's this, uh, we've all got enough barriers and enough limitations in our lives and in our businesses, um, especially this year, it's been really tough. But perhaps your biggest limitation is actually uh, yourself and, and the way this manifests is that you say, um, I can't do that yet, instead of saying, I can do that. Uh, so you're too afraid to make the jump into something new um, and, and maybe you're justifying it to yourself by saying that you'll get to it later or, or you never get to it at all. Uh, is, is that what it feels like for you sometimes? Um, I want to give you a quick example here. Um, maybe you've kept your prices the same for a few years and you know you should increase them, but um, you're scared that, uh, that no one would want to work with you anymore if you did put your prices up. Um, maybe you find it easier to stay comfortable with your current pricing um, rather than push your business up to where it belongs, uh, maybe given your experience and, and your images and the great quality that you have there. Um, so that's one way uh, that you might be saying, I can't do that instead of, yes, I can do that. Um, here's another example. 
what do you do when you think about doing some marketing? So um, maybe you have a moment of inspiration and you think it's time to put together uh, something amazing for some marketing. Um, do you say, I can do this and then go and create something? Or do you say something like, I don't know what to do about marketing. I just want to take photos and, and then you don't do anything about it. Maybe you assume that those clients uh, would never want to work with you anyway. Uh, and maybe that's why you haven't done any serious marketing for your business in a long time. Uh, it's, it's because maybe you're putting up your own roadblock. Um, look, another example, um, let's say you've got an afternoon with no photo shoots booked in. Uh, so you've got a few hours free um, and maybe you'll look at your website, uh, you know, the one that you haven't changed in three years. And even though you know you should be creating more content for your site, do you justify doing nothing about it by saying something like, this is too big, I'm not going to be able to finish this today. That's something you've done. Um, you see, the, I just wonder if the big problem is not other people saying no, it's you saying I can't. So you're looking at everyone else like the awesome photographers you've seen online, uh, the marketing gurus, the people with the huge following on social media, and you think what you do has to be perfect, just like them, or, or there's no point even trying. But maybe that's not true. Um, you, you just don't have to be perfect at everything today. Uh, that can come maybe next month or in 10 years from now or, or never. Uh, um, a, a guy called G.K. Chesterton once said something like this, if something's worth doing, it's worth doing badly. Okay, so why would he say that? Because it's worth doing. So you raising your prices is worth doing, uh, even if that price increase isn't perfect, because most of your clients will be fine with it. And even if you lose a few clients, your business is going to be okay. Uh, writing that marketing piece, uh, reaching out to those dream clients is worth doing because even if you mess it up this time, uh, you'll learn from that experience and you'll do it a little differently um, and a little better uh, next time. Um, working on your website is worth doing, even if it takes a lot of work and even if it takes like a thousand revisions, because the benefits for your business uh, will be huge. Um, quick story on that. I've been working with a real estate photographer uh, for a few months and I've been helping him make changes to his website. And after just a couple of months, he's now on page one of Google for his area. Uh, he's just started working with a really big client who found him online because he was on page one of Google and he's expanding to more commercial clients now as well. And uh, I'm just really pleased for this guy because he started making incremental changes to his business. Um, but he started saying yes to things. And maybe that's, that's just what you've got to do. So stop saying no and, and start saying yes. You've got so much potential, but you don't give yourself a chance to grow if you keep saying no instead of yes, and it's time to change that around. Uh, you can't say no to yourself just because you don't think you'll do a good job today or because you don't think you'll finish that project today, because it's only when you start saying yes today that you're going to do a fantastic job uh, one day. Maybe that day will be next week or next year, but in order to give yourself a chance, it's got to start with you saying yes today. So right now. Um, so look, I just want to encourage you, go out there and do some stuff. So don't be afraid to mess things up. Uh, don't be afraid of mistakes. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing badly because it's worth doing. So stop holding yourself back um, from working on your website or doing some marketing or increasing your prices and say, um, I can do this and I'm going to start today. All right. I, will you do that? I hope some of you will. Um, and I'd love it. Look, drop a comment below. Uh, are you a yes, I can person or are you a no, I can't person? 
Um, and honestly, if this does push you to make some changes, um, even something simple, uh, please come back here later on. Uh, let me know what you've done. I'd, I'd love to hear about it. All right, if you've got any questions at all, uh, drop them in the comments. So uh, if you have any uh, questions or comments or anything like that about anything at all, uh, let me know and uh, we'll have a quick chat about that. I don't think I have anything just at the moment. But when you're watching this later, uh, drop something in and um, let me know what you'd like to do. Um, just want to, as we wrap up, I just want to thank John Crider again from Naples in Florida. Um, go and check out his website. I'll um, have uh, his contact details listed here somewhere in the comments. Uh, and that's about it. I'll catch you on the next one. Uh, if you want to, oh, let me just jump in here. If you want to find me on social, uh, I'm there on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and LinkedIn as well. So I'd love to have a chat with you sometime. All right, that's it for today's live show. Uh, join me again next time and I'll see you then. Bye for now.